Welcome to the G Spot. Five, 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 four, 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 three, 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 two, 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 two one, one, one. one. We'll start the recording. Okay, I'll give us a countdown into the G spot in three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to DGT G spot number 16, um, where we're going to talk about uh, a lot of stuff. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff because there's a lot of things to look at. <laughs> Well, I started saying, I love, I love it. And then I thought, hang on, we're in that Scylla Black. Um, didn't she go, she used to say something like that. Um, well, I thought that was surprise. Well, she said that as well. Um, but uh, well, surprise, surprise. Um, but yeah, okay. So what do we do with the DGT G spot? Basically, uh, we can look at the weird and wonderful things that happen in Dynamic GT League. But also, as is the case with this week, if there are reports that have been placed, um, uh, we can show them. And this week, or from last week's race, there was a lot of reports um, with a lot of information to give. So this is where I think the G-Spot is going to kind of come into its own. In the, um, When we do a steward's report, Ray, one of the things we try and do is keep the amount of words we're using to a minimum um, because we find the more words the less people read yep yep exactly uh, you couldn't have said that in less words um, <laughs> um, so yeah so this is where it's the G's <laughs> well true you could have just nodded your head actually yeah um, but yeah so this is where the G spot is going to come in very very useful hopefully um, now, what I will say is, I mean, some people may disagree with decisions that are made. Um, yeah, some people may misunderstand uh, some of the things that we say at times and got no problem in trying to explain it. Um, uh, so if anybody has any issues, uh, send it to the page. Um, anything you want to mention, Ray, before we get cracking? No. Uh, there is one thing I do want to say. This is potentially going to be the longest g-spot we've ever done so be prepared for that folks okay so uh what we're going to do is um ray will read out what reports have been placed i will read out um what responses have been given from the stewards and then we will have a look at the video footage um and try and sort of explain uh sort of match the words from the stewards to the footage on the screen Okay then, so let's get going. G1, incident one, to you, to me. Over to you, Ray. Uh, so the report is, Art Pal gets nudged by Rich and nudges into Jimmy. Jimmy doesn't go off and Art Pal doesn't think he should, think he shouldn't carry on himself as he wasn't at fault. A few seconds later at 5.12, Jimmy collided with Art Pal. Could have been due to a light back end. Hmm. Wonder what he had. Through though, sorry, though at 5.14, Jimmy appears to drive into Art Pal. And then at 5.19, Jimmy connects with Art Pal again. Yeah. And interestingly, when I had a chat with Art Pal the other day, he said he didn't mention anything at the 5.19 mark. He did. So, oh, you did. Anyway, uh, okay, so the steward's view. Well, Rich makes contact with Art Pal into the corner, which sends Art Pal into Jimmy, sending Jimmy wide. Art Pal then passes Jimmy while Rich waits for Jimmy. It's understandable that Jimmy might have thought it was Art Pal's fault, but it wasn't, so he did not need to wait. There is a couple of further contacts between Art Pal and Jimmy, but it looks like Jimmy went to pass Twilight and turned into Art Pal, then moved away. Any contact after that is seen as general contact because of the following kink in the track and the guys being three wide and nothing intentional. So the steward's verdict is no penalty with no further action. 
what I will say though is, um, obviously, well, this is G1A. There is a second part to this, which we'll get to in a few moments with a little bit of extra information. But we're going to go with what the what has been said by the stewards so far. So let's get ready for the footage in three, two, one. Let's go. So here we see Art Pal then uh, on the spectator view, passing Rich, uh, heading towards fist bumps one, the left hander now. And this is where Rich is going to go in a little bit deep tag the back of Art Pal, Art Pal takes Jimmy, Art Pal overtakes Jimmy, Twilight gets a little bit uh, sideways, Jimmy nudges the or knocks the side of Art Pal and then they are three wide down into the long right hander. So quite a lot going on there but we'll look at it from the view that Art Pal uses and uh, you'll see in the mirror Rich does come in, it's not a big hit but it's enough of a nudge to have a knock on effect. Up, uh, Twilight sideways as we mentioned but then uh, Jimmy does come across um, but then this is where there's three wide there's a tiny bit more contact there but that's where we're saying there's not a lot in that it's just three wide and there's a kink it can happen so looking from off board and you can see yeah there's the contact and this is a situation where Art Pal doesn't need to wait for Jimmy it isn't his fault um, but that's the contact that Art Pal was really uh, concerned about um, and sort of mentioned I think at the time that uh, it feels like Jimmy's driving into him so if we have a look at uh, Jimmy's view I believe this is the view that he uses now from the mirror it could look like Art Pal is the one that just hits him um, but whether Jimmy's looking in the mirror or not I don't know and from a steward's view it kind of looks like perhaps Jimmy's moving away from Twilight there and uh, nudges the side of Art Pal but then there isn't really anything else that's of any concern uh, also there's a tiny little bit of contact um, before Jimmy moves across which I mean to be honest it, it isn't really anything it's coming up now there's nothing in that um, as far as the stewards but it's that move across that Art Pal um, was not overly um, pleased with and we'll get on to that a little bit more um, in a moment but for the actual corner itself yeah Art Pal doesn't need to wait Rich does though um, so he's had a, a knock on effect here and to be fair to Rich he is waiting um, but again we'll see that there is a movement across from uh, Jimmy uh, let's see I, have we got any more views on this I can't remember we might have uh, but yeah I mean the guys are three wide there that can happen there's not a lot in that okay so yeah I think to a degree that covers most of the uh, that I mean as the stewards have said in the corner um, Art Pal doesn't need to wait for Jimmy it wasn't Art Pal that's hit Jimmy it's a knock-on effect um, but something I was wanted to mention to you Ray is because um, obviously the question was posed by SGP uh, when we was doing the stewarding on this um, there's been a situation before where I think Steve F1 got hit across a corner across the grass um, and when he came back onto the track, um, he'd gained places. Now, it wasn't his fault that he'd been sent across the corner. However, it was decided at that time, in that situation, it would be unfair for someone in Steve F1's position to keep those places because he hasn't gained them fairly, even though it's not his fault. Now, someone could take that wording and go well in this case Art Pal shouldn't be making the overtake but I would say there's a massive difference between those two scenarios yeah and somebody's pointed them across the corner or not uh, and not like yeah Art, there's a little touch from Rich that has a knock on effect uh, but I've I can't remember the one with Steve F1, and it must be... I can't, it was you with him. <laughs> was it? <laughs> yeah, it was at Le Mans. Um, one of the slow 90-degree uh, right-handers, you tagged the back of him, it sent him across the grass. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is a situation where... Oh, it's a corner cut. <laughs> well, ex exactly, it was a corner cut. But that's the thing, I mean, in this situation... Um, I mean, even if Jimmy ends up going off the track wide, it, that's not Art Pal's fault. Um, but yeah, if, if you get hit by someone and it sends you cutting a corner and you gain places, yeah, you should be giving those places back. Um, and the person that hits you should be waiting for you and everybody else. Um, but uh, I've just received a message. I wonder if 
Bloody hell, Bunsel. How am I supposed to get that joke in? It's fucking that take half an hour to read that. Um, but yes, yeah, so I, I think that's pretty much most of that one covered. Or is it? I don't know, is it? No. Well, if we move on to G1B, information gathered later. Um, okay, so we're not going to go on to the footage just yet because there's a couple of things that uh, need to mention. Um, and that is that there's kind of two parts to the report that Art Pal has put in. Um, one was so that Jimmy could know that it wasn't him that hit him in the corner. Uh, no problem about that. There was another part where there was the little bit, bits of contact where I would say to Art Pal, they can happen, I wouldn't even worry about those. But then there was the main one where Jimmy moved across and contact was made. Now, at the time, Art Pal did say during the races, I think Jimmy's hitting me on purpose. Um, and... I mean, we know Jimmy a bit. There's other people that know Jimmy better. And the sort of common consensus was, um, I can't imagine Jimmy doing something like that uh, on purpose. But obviously, we will we will have a look into it. Um, and one of the things that we have done um, is uh, we've spoken with Arpel and we're attempting, and we have spoken to, to Jimmy actually, but we are going to speak to him a bit more. Um, and Jimmy did mention that he did intentionally move across into a car. But what he said was, I thought it was Rich next to me and I wanted to give him a cheeky nudge. Now, Rich and Jimmy are very good friends. I believe they work together. Um, and it's one of those situations where me personally, they shouldn't. it's not something that Jimmy should be doing. But at the same time, I can understand him giving Rich a bit of a cheeky nudge. The problem is, it isn't Rich that Rich these. Is that? Yeah, I'm there. I'm still talking. Um, yeah, it isn't Rich that uh, he turned into. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear. You. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's not Rich that he's turned into. It's Art Pal. So Jimmy hasn't intentionally driven into Art Pal. Is intentionally driven into Rich. But it's not Rich, it's Art Pal. Um, now, obviously, we've spoke to Art Pal or with Art Pal about this, and we've told him what um, Jimmy has said. Um, and uh, we have told Art Pal that we will be talking to uh, Jimmy because I know personally, sort of from an admin's perspective, this was something, Ray, that. I mean, you may disagree. I mean, to be fair, the admins, we still need to sort of have a proper chat about this. Um, but it's not something that I think I'd give Jimmy a penalty for. And I'll show why in a moment. But it's definitely something that we want to have a chat with Jimmy about. Are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm Muslim. All right. I was asking you a question. Uh, I'll wait till we have our chat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. Um, well, let's take a look at it then. So, uh, let's see. Three, two, one, let's go. So, we know the incident that happens in the corner. There's nothing in that. And then we've got Jimmy and Art Pal side by side. Now, this is where we're going to see Jimmy. Now, we thought, or I thought, it was Jimmy sort of moving away from Twilight because Twilight sort of comes right a bit. Jimmy's going left. Now, Jimmy moves across and gives Art Pal a nudge or a hit. Now, the reason that I wouldn't give a penalty is because of two things. One, he hasn't hit Art Pal off the track and he's moved away once he's, there has been the contact. So it's not like he's trying to hit Art Pal off the track. Um, he's not trying to um, impede him. Um, he's not doing... I mean, let's put it this way. We've seen two drivers intentionally hitting each other before, and it's no well, this was nowhere near on the level of that, was it, Ray? I think, uh, even though it wasn't art pal, it wasn't meant to hurt. I think it was more, uh, 
he's seen what he's done and went, oh crap, and moved the other way. Mm. Potentially. Um, but, I mean, it's one of those things where I know Art Pal, in discussion with us, uh, commented saying, well, it says in your rules that you can't intentionally hit anybody. And, yeah, it does. But at the same time, situations can can differ. Now, I'm trying to think back to when we've had incidents or situations um, where we've... Well, we know, without naming names, we know that we've had incidents where... Um, two drivers have intentionally been sort of turning into the other guy, but it's more been elbows out, you're not moving me, and it's both drivers doing that. Um, and something that obviously we wouldn't want to happen is for this to escalate to uh, to anything like that. Um, now, I'm not saying that it's fine for people to do what Jimmy has done. It's not. But at the same time, I don't think this is worthy of a penalty. It's worthy of a conversation with Jimmy, uh, which is what we would have had before the race um, just gone. But unfortunately, Jimmy's been away. Um, so if he's listening to this before we spoke to him, don't worry, Jimmy, we're coming for you. Um, but yeah, I don't know if there's anything else you want to add to that, Ray. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, the only well, the only other thing I would say is that in that. I say, had that resulted in Art Pal being off the track, then there'd be no hesitation in a penalty um, to Jimmy. Um, uh, but also, I can understand how, from something like that, Art Pal could potentially take it personally. Because looking at it, it does look like he just he does move across. Uh, we've interpreted it one way; he's interpreted it another way. The reality is, or the proposed reality is something completely different um but i can understand why um art pal could start getting frustrated with something like that okay let's move on to the next one g2 incident two mashed apple hmm um okay so what's incident number two then ray uh it looks like former gary goes into jason Jason does Clyde with Art Pal and Art Pal goes off. Okay. Now, it could be fitting that this uh, whole G Spot video is number 16, and that's the uh, the number that's on the side of Art Pal's car. Um, but anyway, okay, so uh, incident two the steward's view. Jason is very late on the brakes, and on some views, it looks like Gary makes contact but he actually doesn't touch Jason. Jason goes into the corner too fast and knocks Art Pal off the track and does not wait. The steward's verdict is a stage two penalty of minus three points to be applied to Jason's championship points. So let's take a look at this then. So three, two, one, go. Um, so Art Pal, Jason, Gary, they're in a little battle as they're heading down towards fist bumps two and Difficult to see. I mean, Gary does get close. There's a little bit of a touch there from Jason. Art piles off. Jason's uh, up the road and gone. And uh, here comes Jimmy as well. So looking at it from Art Pal's view, uh, I do hate this uh, mirror. Um, so he's ahead. Jason comes in. Bit of a touch. But I can understand it's possible that Gary may have been involved. Now, when the stewards were looking at this, there was a couple of factors. Now, one of them I've said, mentioned already, is that from some views, it looks like Jason, sorry, Gary does hit Jason, but we'll get on to that. Clearly, though, there is contact between Jason and Art Pal. So we saw on the screen there, Gary appears twice, um, but doesn't make contact. And I'm gonna show this in slow motion in a moment. We're looking from Gary here, gets close, so the question there is, as a steward, is that, okay, does Gary touch Jason? Well, we're gonna look at this now, slow motion, but also wanna look at the speed. So Jason speeds at 156, and it's going to slowly increase as his full throttle as we move forward. So what I'm looking for here is a spike in the speed. So if Gary hits Jason, does his speed go from say 158 to 166? But what we're gonna see is that Jason is full throttle, Gary's not on the screen yet, 
and Jason's speed is slowly increasing to 159. And in a moment, we'll see Gary's nose start appearing. Actually, it's happening now. So Gary's nose is now appearing. Uh, we're at 159 mile an hour. So we move it on. Gary's getting closer. It's still at 159. It's getting closer. So let's try and get it to the point where Gary's at the closest. We'll have a couple of looks at this. So we're at 160. So is there contact between Gary and Jason? And I would say with that gap at the moment, no. So let's continue it on. Does he get closer? Maybe hard to tell. He's on a bit of a corner. Maybe the front corner has made contact. So uh, let's have a look. But there hasn't been a spike in speed. So if there is contact, there's not been a spike in speed. And I'd still say that Gary's does not close enough for contact there. So let's see if Jason's speed uh, spikes. Uh, so and Gary is now actually the gap between Gary and Jason is starting to get a little bit uh, bigger not by much but yeah they're not close enough for contact at the moment so we'll continue this on and Gary is now definitely that gap is getting bigger so there isn't a further contact Jason's speed is still at 160 and I apologise that this is obviously very, very slow, but it's what it is. So it's now at 161. Jason's still flat out. Bear in mind as well, I would say that the breaking point is around about now um, to take this corner nicely. Jason's speed slowly increasing by one mile an hour at a time. It's not an instant spike. 166. And this is where the contact with Art Pal is coming up now. So 166, 165. Jason still full throttle, not on the brakes. Now is at 149. So the contact has sent him down to 149 mile an hour. And we can see how close these two are. So, okay, yeah, there's, that's contact there. But also Jason's speed has dropped. And that's where the contact happens. Jason's obviously tried to take evasive, but he's still not on the brakes yet. <coughs> now, no, he's still not on the brakes yet. Um, so although his car has slowed down a lot, he's still not on the brakes. Now he's on the brakes. Um, but this is way, 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 way too late to be on the brakes, um, in my opinion. Now he's starting to put more brakes on, and then Gary tags him the second time. So that's one of those where we looked into it as best as we could. And although from the trail view from Gary... Um, it could look like there may have been contact or could look like there may have been a bit of lag. Um, I think the visual aspect of what could have been lag was Jason's car slowing down very quickly after the contact. Um, but from what we've seen, there was no contact from Gary into Jason. Anything to add there, Ray? No, nope, you've explained it all. Okay. If you want to get a joke in now, you can while I'm having a drink. No. I don't have any. <laughs> okay, we'll move on then. G3. Incident 3. Shitty pity. Um, okay, uh, over to you then, Ray. Report is Gary and Jimmy forced me into the pits. Also, can admins talk if other drivers should be on the race in line when going to the pits? I had no clue until they forced me in. Okay. Stewart's view. Jimmy and Gary are in a battle through the last corner and are caught up by SRI. With Jimmy on the left, Gary in the middle, and SRI on the right. Jimmy moves to the right towards the pits while on the boost. I guess to get ahead of Gary, but it does not work. Jimmy may have been deceived by the radar when he moved across. Jimmy makes contact with Gary and they both move to the right where SRI is. There is a big crash and they all end up in the pit lane. SRI was attempting an overtake and not wanting to pit. Gary may have been wanting to pit, but also looked to try and give SRI room. It looks like Jimmy was wanting to pit, but with cars on his right, there was not the space to do so. The stewards' verdict is a stage 2 penalty of minus 3 points applied to Jimmy's championship points for causing a collision with two cars and them ending up in the pits. In regards to being on the boost, well, if it had worked and he'd made it into the pits without contact, then it would be fine. But it didn't work. 
so it's funny to watch. Um, no action against Gary, as there was no time or room for him to avoid anything. As for drivers going from the racing line to the pit lane, that is fine as long as they don't hit other cars while doing it. Oh, uh, doing it. Um, so, oh, excuse me, should we have a look at this footage then? In three, two, one, let's go. So, SRI it is that ends up in the pit lane. So, here he is on the spectator view. You can see he's catching up to the cars battling ahead. Um, and yeah, tucks sort of to the right hand side. And then we see Gary moving across. And now Jimmy moving across. You don't get a full view of it on the spectator view, but we saw a little bit of that. Um, on the race footage so this is SRI's view coming into the final corner and to be honest nothing wrong going on here SRI gets to the right hand side and then nothing he could do and it does happen rather quickly this so let's have a look from Gary uh, SGP's coming past Gary SRI's behind him Jimmy's still there uh, Gary sort of moves left a bit to give the room but then sort of can't really but we get a better view of this uh, from the offboards in a moment. So this is from Jimmy. You see Gary come across and just knock him a little bit wide. And then Jimmy trying to get over to the pit lane. Well, Jimmy gets in the pits fine. Um, sort of. So we'll see Jimmy here. He is going to be on the boost. And there is... It's a tiny, tiny little bit of contact. But we're going to look at this in slow motion. Because what I want to mention here is that... I personally believe as a steward that Jimmy has been duped by the radar because as Jimmy is moving across, obviously he showed his intent to try and go into the pit lane. He's on the boost. No problem as long as he doesn't hit anybody. But as Jimmy's car moves across, this is where on the radar it would show Gary's car being behind him, but he's not. There's a little bit of overlap. And at this point, there's not a lot Gary can do because he can't go right. He's got Ray there. However, the contact, I do believe, makes him go right a little bit. Now, whether Jimmy would have been able to know that SRI was there or not, I don't know. Um, but again, if he's been duped by the radar, well, it, that could be the cause, but it's not an excuse. So the contact happens and they all end up in the pit lane which we're going to have another look at in a moment. Um, I mean, Jimmy may not have realised that there was a crash until this sort of point. Um, but yeah, we'll have another look from uh, another camera in a moment. So, going from Gary's view, SGP cheekily making an overtake. That's all right, little nudge, nothing in all of this. So here, we're going to see that Gary realises that SRI is there. He's going to move left a little bit uh, to give SRI some space. But now Jimmy's coming across... And Gary can't really do anything. He's now been moved across to the right um, into SRI. Now there's the collision that's happening and there's not a lot any of these guys can now do. SRI ends up hitting the wall. Big hit. Um, and as we mentioned on the Shoes verdict, um, SRI wasn't wanting the pits here. It actually pitted the lap before. So this is a situation where there's not a lot Gary could have done there. Um, so if we're looking at it now from SRI's view, some may say, well, SRI shouldn't have gone for the overtake. He's absolutely fine to go for the overtake. If people want to pit, that's up to them, but they can't just move across. In this scenario, if Gary wants the pits, he's got to back off. If Jimmy wants the pits, he's either got to be in front of them or he's got to back off. So there's no fault for SRI being in this position um, now, SRI may not have seen that Jimmy's coming across, but again, this isn't a situation where SRI needs to back out. Some may say, well, Gary could have backed out of this and avoided the collision. Well, maybe, but there is one key feature to that, and this is, as we're looking at this in slow motion, it's very easy to go, he should have done this, he should have done that. But when we look at it in full speed, Look at how quickly the contact happens from Jimmy on the left, Wall on the right, Bosch, done. It's a split second. So the opportunity for Gary to back out isn't there. But what I would say is, I'd probably blame SGP for doing an overtake like that and putting them off and then catches Steve F1 and nearly wiping him out as well. What do you reckon, Ray? Blame SGP? Hi. <laughs> yeah, it's his fault. 
I mean, he'd say, what a move! I'd say, uh, well, I don't know, Steve F1 must have shit himself there, though. <laughs> so, anything else to add to that, Ray? No. Bad. <laughs> That's the first time I've seen it sideways. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I mean, it's... It is one of the, I mean, I'd, I'd be interested to see what your opinion is of someone using the boost to get ahead to get into the pits. If they can do it fairly, then fair enough. If they've used the boost and they're still not ahead, then they shouldn't be going. Mm-hmm. I mean, do you For think it's boost? do you think it's possible that Jimmy has been caught out by the radar? Yeah, it's possible, but you should uh, take note of when we say about the radar. Mm -hmm, Absolutely. I mean, this is the thing, I can understand that that's what might have happened, but as we said on last week's G, or the last G spot, it's now not a situation where you can use that as an excuse to not get a penalty. Um, We've done everything that we can to let people know about the radar. And it is easy to forget and it is easy to misjudge it by a small margin, which it looks like Jimmy has done there. But the result of that is, yeah, a crash. and Well, not unfortunately, a crash and a penalty for Jimmy. The unfortunate bit was that uh, SRI's ended up in the pits and the fortunate bit is that it's funny as fuck. Um, (laughs) Okay, on to the next one. G4, Incident 4, coming like a wrecking train. Uh, so in this one, I try to back out of a move with Steve F1 and Conrad, but Jimmy comes in like a train and rear ends me into Steve F1 and he goes off. Okay, the stewards view uh, Conrad and Steve are side by side in the fast S's with SRI behind them, Gary and Rich behind them, and then Jimmy behind them. SRI starts to poke his nose in a gap between the cars ahead of him, fills his pants and then backs out wisely. As this happens, Gary gets ahead of Rich and Jimmy avoids Rich and then finds himself with some slower cars ahead of him in what is usually a flat out corner. There is contact with Jimmy to SRI and SRI into Steve to the pleasure of Conrod as Steve heads to the barriers. Jimmy waited for the drivers involved. So the stewards' verdict is no penalty as Jimmy waited. But we're still going to have a look at it. Um, So let me get ready. I I forgot to get my video a bit ready. Okay. Oh, itchy nose. So, uh, three, two, one, let's go. So we see a few cars battling here. Steve F1 Conrad side by side. Don't really see a lot. There's so much going on. We can see there's contacts in different places. Um, Steve F1's ghosted. SRI's now going a bit slower around the final corner. Um, and there's cars coming past. So there's a lot going on. Oh, there's still a lot going on. Um, yeah, a lot going on in that situation. So on board with SRI now. And this is where he sticks his nose in, shits himself, backs out. Um, and then it would be easy for someone to think that he hits SR, uh, sorry, he hits Steve F1 off. But we'll see from this view. Oh, we're going to go slow motion. Um, we, we might see the uh, the skid marks on the road. I can understand there's a gap there. And I could understand someone thinking, mm, maybe. But at the same time, fair play to SRI. He does back out of it. But I look at that and think, well, Conrad and Steve F1 are giving themselves plenty of room to each other and this is where SRI now yeah he's going to be backing out what's SG is that Gary I don't know what Gary's doing off the track there mind but maybe that's when he's avoiding um, Rich so the two cars ahead are a little bit wobbly here comes Jimmy Um, and there is a bit of contact that then sends um, SRI forward into Steve F1 Steve F1's going to go off to the side and onto the grass. I can understand SRI waiting for Steve F1 if perhaps he thought that this was his fault, um, but it wasn't. But we do see Jimmy was there and backs out of it. So let's have a look at it from Jimmy's view. And there he is avoiding Rich. And then, I mean, it's not a massive hit. There's a little hit, but then he is off the throttle and lets everybody through. Now, this is another one of those situations where, for me personally, this happens so, so fast. And so does this. Probably one of the worst things in racing is to have a crash and then crash into a car that's off track having a crash. But, I mean, 
Jimmy does well to avoid Rich, but then in the middle of some corners that are normally flat out, the cars ahead are a little bit slower. That's caught Jimmy out. Now, if he didn't have Rich to avoid, he may not have been caught out by it. Um, so he could blame Rich, but he was caught out by it. Um, he definitely did tag the back of SRI, who then went on to hit Steve F1. Steve F1 off the track. But Jimmy waited, knew he'd made a mistake, and uh, yeah, did the right thing. And this is perhaps another reason why, regarding incident 1B, we tend to see that when Jimmy does knowingly make a mistake, um, he'll wait. Um, so, yeah. But anyway, anything to comment on that one, Ray? Nope. Okay, on we go then. So, G5, Incident 5. Pity shitty. So... Uh, Steve F1 slows down and goes across the track from racing line to the pits and have nowhere to go other than the pits <laughs> this second time in one night most drivers are in a chat could have pre-warned but no didn't help this happen already yeah so the stewards view it's unfortunate that SRI has already been sent through the pits once adding to any frustration this situation may have caused. Steve is heading around the last corner side by side with Art Pound, while SGP is hunting around the apex and sneaking his nose into Steve's rear making small contact but enough that sends Steve wider through the corner and into Art Pound. Steve then wants the pits so he slows down, backs off to let SGP pass on his right so that he can then head to the pits. As SGP goes by Steve, sorry, as SGP goes by Steve, goes to pick up, oh, okay, difficult to read. As SGP goes by Steve, Steve goes to pick up speed and head to the pits. At this point, SRI catches up quickly on the right and is now heading towards the pits, even though he does not want to go in there. Steve spots SRI at the last moment and tries to give him room and slow down more. I would point out that SRI closes the gap to Steve very quickly, too quickly perhaps for Steve to be able to know he was there initially. The steward's verdict, no further action. It is very unlucky that SRI has ended up in the pits. Steve has done what would be expected from a driver wanting to get into the pits when they have a driver between them and the pit lane. It is unlucky that SRI catches quickly and does well to take evasive that unfortunately ends up with him in the pits. So, let's take a look then, shall we? So, three, two, one, let's go. Um, so, we see SRI here behind SGP um, being cheeked around the final corner again. Um, and then from this view, you're not really going to see a lot other than Jimmy going big sideways and a little bit of movement. So, we'll go on board with SRI. We might see there's a little nudge there from SGP. There's actually two of them. And then Steve F1 is backing out to let SGP pass. At the, and then at that point, SRI is there. Um, so looking from off board, Steve F1 has done what he should do here. Unfortunately, though, SRI is there at the same point. Here we're going to see the two nudges. There's one. There's two. So blame SGP. Steve F1 then backs out, goes to move in. Now, what I would say is, looking at Steve F1's data, he doesn't just swing into the pits flat out. He does slow down here. Um, this is where he's letting SGP through. But once he's done this, he moves to the pit lane, but then he also reacts once he's seen Ray. Um, so he's slowed down to let SGP through. Now he's moving towards the pit lane. Here comes SRI, late overtaking manoeuvre. <laughs> um, but there Steve F1 moves left a bit. He's realised he's there, tried to give him the room, and in the pits they go. Now, I can fully understand why this is frustrating for SRI. But again, from a steward's view, I would look at this and go, OK, SRI is even on Steve F1's radar at that point. And even if he was to look in the mirror at this point, you'd think, oh, he's far enough back, I can, right, let SGP go through, I can move across. But this then happens so quickly, and bear in mind the mirror, SRI's already alongside now. So 
this again is one of those situations where in slow motion it could like he's got the time to deal with it but let's have a look at how quickly again this happens so the back out took him behind is there so it's happening very quickly now i could understand anybody questioning the stewards on that like has he forced him into the pits or anything like that i would have no problem with anybody questioning it uh, my response though would be uh, in that situation we're seeing a driver try and do all of the right things um, and Ray is just extremely sorry SRI is just extremely unlucky um, any thoughts Ray? I'd have gone he's a cut oh but is that but <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah um, so uh, yeah and I will mention as well that neither Steve F1 or SRI uh, had any input on the um, uh, the decision of that penalty. However, uh, sorry, no penalty. However, um, I do know that Steve F1 had put some comments to the page um, about, like, is it wise that somebody overtakes on the right-hand side at near the pit entry when they've already been put in the pits once? And without going into too much detail of that, I'd say anyone can overtake on any side they like. Um, but yeah, it's. So you meant it? Well, no. Um, <laughs> no, I think if you meant it, it wouldn't have sort of had that oh shit moment um, of uh, yeah, avoid it. But again, it's one of those things where, I mean, remember when. Uh, who was it that spun and put uh, hay in the pits? Was it Fluffy? There wasn't a lot hay could, sorry, Fluffy could do at that point. I'm not saying this is the same, but it's not on that same level. But sometimes, um, yeah, it is decided that a penalty, oh. yeah, shit <laughs> happens, and a penalty is not not necessarily the right thing. Uh, okay, should we move on to the next one? Oh, I'm nearly out of breath. G6, Incident 6, touching you, touching me. Yep, so this one Jimmy collided with Art Pal, probably a recent incident, but there was enough space in, inside of Jimmy to the tighter line because there is a driver on the outside of him. Okay, so the stewards view. Jimmy and Art Pal through a race long battle find themselves side by side into the fast S's. There is minor contact between the two drivers where from Jimmy's view it could look like Art Pal hits him and from Art Pal's view it could look the other way around. Moments after this there is another contact which is slightly bigger but both drivers are trying to give room and the contact doesn't have a lasting effect and is simply what can happen sometimes on the track. Stewart's verdict, no further action. Okay, so if we get ready to look into this one then in three, two, one, let's go. So Jimmy and Art Pal side by side through the fast S's. And you can see they are trying to give each other the room, the space, but there's a couple of contacts through there um, which can happen. So looking from Art Pal's view. And then here's the nudge off. He's off a little bit. I mean, it's not a big off, um, but it's enough to unsettle. But his Jimmy's leaving the room. There's a bit of contact where it looks like Art Pal's perhaps come across. So kind of see 50-50, but what I'm interested in here or what the stewards are interested in is are both drivers trying to give each other room? Well, Jimmy is, yes, and so is Art Pal. Art Pal's all over the kerb. Unfortunately, though, that kerb is going to spit him out a bit and move into Jimmy. Now, this is where Jimmy could go, bloody hell, he's hit me. Um, but both drivers are still moving away from each other here at the moment. Jimmy now turns into this corner, but unfortunately dips a wheel, clips the front edge of the kerb, which is going to move him over to the right a bit, into Art Pal, that last slightly bigger contact, which is going to send Art Pal that little bit further wide. But Jimmy, look, is still turning left to try and give Art Pal the space, and he actually backs off the throttle as well he's trying to give Art Pal the room so as a steward these are the things that we look at and go well he's trying to give the space and a, a bit of contact has happened yes and a driver's ended up with a couple of wheels off the track yes but there's not really a lot in it it can happen both drivers are trying to give each other room 
So there's some scenarios where I think you'd agree, Ray, we'd go, yeah, there's a bit of contact, and I could understand Art Powell thinking, well, if I think he's hit me earlier, is he is he hitting me now? I don't know. But, yeah, what's your view? Yeah, I can understand that view. Uh, but it just looks hard racing with each other. It doesn't, like... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, Malicious? No. Well, that's the thing. That That's where the... Yeah. If neither was attempting to give space to the other, if one was trying to go for the apex while the other car is next to him, between them and the apex, you could go, well, hang on a minute. Yeah, it's not quite right, this, guys. But they are both mm-hmm. trying to give each other space there. And they've yep. both got caught out by the curb, to be fair. Um, but I do find it interesting, and like we showed it to Artpad as well, saying, look, um, to say, well, looking at it, could you understand if you were in Jimmy's position why you could possibly think, well, Artpad's come across and it me? Because mm-hmm. there is that, and we've seen it before, from that view, it can look, oh, he's hit me. But then when you look at it, and same with Artpad, I think, well, Jimmy's hit me. Well, the curb's done him a bit while he's trying to give you the room and it's a bit like we're saying with the previous uh, incident both drivers are trying to do all of the right things there now they've not fully succeeded but they're trying to do all of the right things and it's it would be extremely harsh to give people penalties for trying to do the right things although there are occasions where people can try and do the right things and get it completely fucking wrong and definitely deserve a penalty. Yep. Like Jimmy trying to get in the pits. <laughs> uh, okay, on to the next one then. G7, incident seven. Touching you, passing me. And guess what? <laughs> Jimmy tried his art well and I'm waving off the track. Okay, so... Uh, the stewards view them um okay the stewards view just after the previously mentioned battle because this is right after that um heading into the final corner both drivers take different approaches art pal goes fast into the corner with a slower exit and someone wanted understeer and jimmy goes for a slower entry with a faster exit again both drivers are trying to give each other room but there is contact and Art Pal does end up partially off the track. We feel that yes, there was contact and yes, Art Pal ended up partially off the track, but not really with a lasting negative effect as he repasses Jimmy into the next corner. The contact was minimal, although it may have felt like a big hit. It was also not from Jimmy doing anything daft. Sometimes contact happens and not all contact results in penalties and we feel this contact and situation is not enough for a penalty but do understand there could be an accumulation of frustration. Stewards verdict, no further action as regards to penalties. Both drivers have been contacted privately to try and reduce any lamb, chicken or beef stewing. What I do want to add on to that before we move on to the footage as well is that um, uh, the admin spoke recently and uh, a comment was mentioned again, which I want to put forward now, which is, um, oh, I've forgotten it. Ooh, don't forget it, you know, uh, What was it SGP mentioned? Oh, yes, that's it. I've got it. Um, there are occasions where... A situation like this may occur where we would go, you know what, we understand the frustration. There's not a lot in it and it would be harsh to give a penalty. But maybe the other, maybe the the one doing the overtake perhaps should have waited. Now, I'm not saying that that is what the situation is here, but we have had a few like that in the past, haven't we, Ray? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Where it would be harsh to give a penalty but yeah maybe they could have waited um okay so let's take a look at this one then so jimmy and art pal uh three t- oh my god uh might be a good idea if i time 
see if i don't go three two one go i don't know when to put the video clips on when i'm okay. editing it you know um so let me, let me, let me get myself ready um apologies for this okay so three two one let's go so our pal jimmy into the final corner spectator one here and we'll see Jimmy comes faster out the corner. A little bit of a touch there. Now, from this view, we don't really see the full effect of it. So, on Art Pound, she's going in. Bit of understeer coming here. Jimmy comes along with a little bit of a touch. And Art Pound ends up with a couple of wheels uh, on the ground. So, we see here Jimmy backs out for the slower entry. Art Pound's sort of drifted a little wide. Then they've converged. And from this view, from Jimmy, what Jimmy may have seen, he wouldn't have known. I don't believe whether our car was off the track or not. There is a bit of contact, um, which I do want to mention something about that uh, in a moment. Now we'll look from our pole's view. Yes, there's a bit of understeer. Yes, there's a little bit of contact. There's not a lot in. It's, it is one of those where, as admins or stewards, we'd look at it and go, yeah, there's a bit of contact. There isn't a lot in it. So we've seen that our pole's had the understeer. Now there's going to be the little bit of contact. But again, Jimmy's trying to do all the right things here. He is trying to slow the car down. He has got maximum steering on that he can have. We'll get onto that again in a moment. Perhaps he should have slowed the car down a bit more, but he's not understeering. He's not oversteering. He's not out of control. There is a bit of contact. And again, just after that, he is still trying to give Art Powell uh, the space. Um, so as we look at it from this view again, it happens so quick as well, there's not a lot in it, but also Art Palm does get to um, attempt to the overtake back into uh, turn one with Jimmy trying to have a cheeky look back at him. Now, I mean, as a steward, one way we, we could have looked at it is go, um, sorry, one way we could have looked at it is, well, Jimmy's let you back through into turn one, but I'm not saying that that's what happened. Um, but there are a few things in that that we do want to mention. And Ray, I'll let you mention about the steering angle thing in a moment. Um, the fact that both drivers have gone into that corner in different ways can happen on corners like that. On a track like this, we've seen it before. And there can be a convergence point. The contact that happens, if it was Jimmy into the back of Art Pal. I'd perhaps lean more towards there could be a penalty come in um, because hitting the back of someone I do see as being a little bit different to the contact that was here uh, where it's side to side. Yes, there's contact. There's not a lot in it. And again, both drivers are trying to do, trying to do the right thing. We all felt it would be extremely harsh to give a penalty for that. But we all we do understand why Art Pal may be frustrated by it and think it should be a penalty, especially if throughout the races felt like there's been multiple contacts um, between uh, Jimmy and himself. Yep. All right. Well, what do you want to mention about the steering angle then, Ray? So we looked at the steering angle because. Uh, I thought Jimmy wasn't putting enough on and holding below or whatever you want to say I had that crap mm. so he's putting it for the speed he's doing and the way he's turned the car that's as much steering lock he could put on at that time so that is his full steering lock yeah. uh, just pad thing I suppose uh, But uh, yeah, trying not to hit, and it's lights of touches. Yeah, that's where the stewards went with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I can understand anybody being a bit frustrated, especially. I mean, if you're in a situation where you feel you've been knocked a few times, and this is this is where, I mean, on that report, it does say that. Sorry, on the stewards' view on that one. Uh, or stewards report on that one, it does say that we've spoken to both drivers and what we have done is we've spoken to both drivers saying um basically look try and give each other just give each other a bit more room because what we should be doing and this is a general 
comment here now is we should be trying to um, move away from people rather than move towards people um, so we have spoken to both guys um, uh, quickly about um, like going forward can you just try and make sure that you're giving each other a bit of room um, we've seen a few things where um, we know that uh, Art Pal has placed a few reports um, and I think rightly so um, and Jimmy will now be aware of that we are not aware yet whether Jimmy may have felt that he was getting uh, hit on occasion or not but we've seen a couple of moments um, that we've been able to show Art Pal and say look it, this is where it can look like someone is hitting you or vice versa um, so just in case there is anything building we're, we're having a chat with both of you and we are going to have a, a chat with uh, Jimmy about the other stuff anyway but I just wanted to sort of mention that <laughs> anything else on that one Ray? No. Nope. Okay uh, actually one more thing and I do want to mention this although yes we have mentioned that our power was able to retake in the next retake the position in the next corner do not for any moment think that you can use that as an excuse for not having given a place but well he overtook me in the next corner so what's the problem that's not the situation um for every situation this is it's one of those things where it's a um uh what's i'm trying to think it's uh, a solo entity um the the situation dependent that's what i was trying to think of so like with sri ended up in the pits one he gets hit into the pits the other one he doesn't two very different things is still ended up in the pits but in two very different ways with two very different outcomes so yeah just don't go thinking that it's fine um a bit like with twilight last week he should have he could have waited and let connor through straight away instead he decided to wait six corners and then kind of went into the pits okay should we move on to the next one ray i think that's a yes yes okay right g8 incident eight i think i can i know i can oh shit so incident eight, the next two reports have been put together and their incident eight as they are from the same incident. Although I waited and reporting myself as it was a lap lap, I broke too late on a tight line and ran SRI's last lap. Com <laughs> next incident the, the report part two. Complete and utter shit show in that corner. Don't know what was going on in people's head there. Not the standards the drivers usually drive at, to be honest, but that was multiple people just pushing too hard or angry at other people's mistakes. Yes, Appa waited, but not sure it was, if it was entirely his fault. I'll leave that to the stewards for all that happened in that corner. Okay, well, the stewards' view. Uh, there is a lot going on with this one excuse me multiple battles going on behind sri and this will be easier to digest on the g spot with the video clips so i'll keep this shortish i've never been able to keep it shortish um art pal does break late into the corner and does make contact with sri and sri ends up off the track art pal waits for sri however art pal was touched before making contact with sri the touch came from Jimmy, but Jimmy was touched by Gary, who broke way, way, way too late. So late that he didn't break until after he had made contact with Jimmy. It is possible that Gary did not know what effect his contact had as Jimmy survived the corner and our pal was apologising to SRI for hitting him off. This isn't the end of it either. Gary and Rich are in a three-way with Jason, who also breaks way, way, way too late for the corner, while three cars ahead are fighting to be first in the barrier. Jason makes a very late move on Jimmy, but then isn't able to make the corner, and manages somehow to catch Art Pal and SRI, and helps Art Pal put SRI in the wall, with Jason also ending up off the track. Stewards' verdict on this one. 
Art pal, no further action. He made an error and waited as he should have. But he was also affected by others um, after making his mistake. Gary, stage two penalty of minus three points to be applied to his championship points for breaking too late, making contact that has a knock-on effect resulting in cars off track. Jason, stage two penalty of minus three points to be applied to his championship points for breaking too late and making contact with cars ahead, resulting in cars off track. Okay, so as I mentioned, a lot going on in this one. So I'm pretty sure in this ray we're going to be having a lot of slow mos to try and sort of go through everything that happened. So three, two, one, let's go. Um, so here we go. The spectate view. We can see there's a lot going on um, just behind SRI. We saw this bit on the race footage with Art Pal and Jason coming in, and we'll see Art Pal slow down here, and uh, Jason's going to come past him in a moment. Um, and SRI will eventually get there. So there we go, SRI is now through. So if we look from Art Pal's view, we'll be able to see what he does. Now, he does break too late, and he does make contact with SRI, leaves him no room. It would be a penalty, but he has waited. Now, we'll see from this view that, yes, he breaks way too late, because around about here, maybe a little bit further forward, is the breaking point but he's not breaking yet. Jimmy's also wobbling a little bit on the curb. It's a little bit of contact coming in a moment. There. Now, Jimmy's car had a weird movement. It was getting close, moved away a little bit, and then went in for the contact, and we'll look at that in a moment. But Art Powell's on the brakes way too late, as we saw with Jason earlier. He's not even fully on the brakes yet. So, yeah, he has braked too, too late. However, it is highly possible that that little touch from Jimmy has had a knock-on effect, an additional impact that stops Art Pal from slowing the car down enough to not avoid hitting Ray, but at least to avoid putting Ray off the track. And this is where Ray now uh, decides, I don't want to race around this track anymore. I'm going on to that one over there. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so now we'll see it from Jimmy's view. And what we'll notice is, oh, a cheeky little front wing from someone. Um, and that someone is Gary. So Gary, Jason, Rich, three wide. Tricky situation for these three. But Gary does break way too late, hits Jimmy, um, and uh, makes the move. Now, it could be said he shouldn't make the move on Jimmy. But let's have a look at this in a little bit of slow motion, shall we? So, again, looking at Gary's speed. Jason's going to come across and make contact, but I'm not worried about that because with them being three wide, there's a bit of pinball. Um, so nothing really too worried about. The roundabout here somewhere, they should be thinking about braking. But Jimmy, uh, sorry, Gary's doing 178 mile an hour in fifth. I didn't know that was possible. He definitely should be thinking about braking about now, but he's not. He's still doing 178. He's not on the brakes. Jimmy's getting close to Art Pal. We're going to look at the camera view here just to see it. So, personally, around about here is definitely, you should be on the brakes for, in my view already. Um, but also, Jason shouldn't be thinking about attempting an overtake. Gary's now realised he's off throttle, makes contact with Jimmy. He's still not on the brakes, mind. Um, so makes the contact with Jimmy, which moves Jimmy across a little bit into Art Pal. It's not a big hit, but we do feel it had an impact. And we see Jason up the inside. Um, he might be going, what a move? Um, but it, it's not. Um, and we'll see that in a moment. Um, so, yeah, there is contact from Gary to Jimmy. And it's possible that Gary had no idea that any contact he had with Jimmy had a knock-on effect further forward. He wouldn't have seen it. For Jason, though, this way he's going to get pinballed. A bit tricky for him, but, yeah, way too late on the brakes. And I think we're going to have a look at this in slow motion again because it happens so quickly. A lot of these things have happened so quickly around this track. It's the nature of it. But, again, um, breaking point. If you've got cars ahead of you, you're probably going to be wanting to brake now. Or now. At least now. What about now? Oh, I'm off the throttle That's now. <laughs> well, he's off the throttle. He's not on the brakes yet. 
is still not on the brakes yet. Oh, he's just on the brakes, actually. Tired of sliver. But this is where it's way, 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 way too late to be on the brakes when you got this many cars in front of you. Um, and considering that the uh, the braking point is over here. Um, so braking point's over here. Jason's braked over there. Um, similar place to where Art Pal did. Um, may have got away with it if no one else was there but unfortunately there is so yeah it's a bit of a late move now on jimmy can't fault jimmy for turning in um because i'd say jason has got there unfairly and yes there's a little bit of contact but jason's car is going straight on now jason's car has a little bit of an extra touch with sri here and some may say well art pal's already hitting hitting sri off but it's what happens with Jason's car here now. Jason can't stay on the track. And that's a telltale sign you've gone in way too quick. There is an extra touch with SRI that helps SRI into the barrier. Jason's gone around. So this really is where Jason Jason, uh, Jason should have waited for SRI, really. Um, and, yeah. Oh, so much going on. I can perhaps understand that he might not have known what had happened, what was going on, but it's one of those where, yeah, it broke way too late, as did Gary, as did Art Pal. Um, but Art Pal did do the right thing and um, on reflection. Um, but, yeah, Gary and Jason getting the penalty. Um, but, as I said, it's one of those things, Ray, where if there are no cars around you and you've been able to break at that point and make the corner... It doesn't mean that's where you can break and make the corner when this car's in front of you, does it? Yeah, yeah. You, you need to be thinking uh, a few, few metres early to get off the throttle and, and onto the brakes. You just can't break at your normal breaking point. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay, uh, before we move on to the next one, um, the next one... Uh, isn't a report that's the reports dealt with now hopefully we've been able to show them and explain them in a way that is helpful for people um the next one isn't a report but uh we did get a message um from gary um last week saying good evening i didn't report this incident as i was away but any chance it could be looked at on the g-spot so i thought yeah okay why not so ray hasn't seen this so ray's gonna get to see it um and uh, give us uh, give us his view on it now this one ray um i'll give us a countdown to going into the the g uh, the g8 or g9 bit and we don't have to pause it we can it'll go straight into the footage so are you ready Two seconds or what I did <laughs> <laughs> were you at the footage were you yeah no, i'm good no. okay so three two one let's go G9, race 8, can I have a garification, please? So I'm going to see Formula oh, Gary. Yeah. What? Oh, I was going to say, well, I, say <laughs> I see Formula Gary and Conrad side by side. What's happening? Oh, oh, Gary's off the track. Oh, no. Oh, dear, oh, dear. What has happened here, Ray? Mm. I'll let you yeah. carry on now. So as we can see in this crappy view, uh, Conrad at the side of Gary... And Gary goes to turn in, Conrad's not turning in yet, and it looks as if uh, Conrad's just forced Gary off the track. Oh, has he? That's what it looks like. It looks like. Uh, see, what but, you see what you think on this bit when it's slowed down. In a moment. Yeah. So, as you see, Conrad's still going straight, Gary's turning uh, towards Conrad Conrad's still going straight look at the cars ahead though, they've only just started turning in a lot later yeah. then Conrad's starting to turn in yeah so this is yeah. this is an interesting, go on then I mean it's the first time you've seen it so I'm interested to get your initial thoughts I, I think Conrad, what he's done is follow the cars in front out for the late turning uh, and try to keep some uh, slipstream and Gary's went to go early and now could debate it as a car with there. I think 
was at the time. So Conrad's left him enough room. But See, I've not sat down and went <laughs> No, well I'll tell you what, I'll I'll talk a bit, you can have another look. Um now I looked at it and I thought, okay, from Gary's view, I was like, oh okay, maybe there's something in that. Then when I looked at it from the other views, I thought mm, Connor's not really done anything. Um I think Gary's just unlucky. Gary's gone to turn in and Connor's not turning in yet. And Connor doesn't have to be turning in yet. Um, I think it's just unfortunate that Gary's kind of turned in a moment before Conrad turns in. I think at the point that there is a little bit of contact, there is still room f for Gary there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I had a look whether Conrad sort of made any movement to the left or anything, and he hasn't. So, I think with that one, I would find it extremely difficult to uh, warrant giving Conrad a penalty or anything like that. I think it's just massively unlucky on Gary's part. Um, it's perhaps one of those where he may have thought the car next to him was going to turn in for the corner, but they hadn't yet. Sometimes that can happen. Uh, he may have thought at the time that he was hit off, and I can understand that. Uh, but I haven't looked at it from a, other views. And uh, the the one that got it for me was the slow-mo one. Now, okay, we know things, it looks easier in slow-mo, but in slow-mo you clearly see that Gary's car has turned to Connor's car. There's no movement from Connor's car to Gary's car. So that, for me, is where I'd go, yeah, unlucky, Gary. Um... Yeah, if you want to give anyone a penalty, uh, might want to look in the mirror. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think I could put any blame on Connor there. Yeah, I mean, it could be a, under a, a discussion for the stewards on occasion, but yeah, I mean, it'd be interesting to see what the other admins say. If there had only been the one or two things on the G spot, I would have got their views, but obviously, there's been fucking loads this week, guys. Um, to be honest, I'm surprised. Yeah, this... yeah. Say again. Steve F1 took the week off. Yeah, yeah, he did. Um, I'm surprised though. We're only up to an hour and ten minutes. Eleven and a half minutes. So it's not taken as long as I thought it would. Um, okay, so are we anything else we want to mention on that one, or uh, anything? Uh, yeah, anything to add? Same. Okay, the next one then. Uh, which we'll get to in a moment. I just want to check something. There was a situation that occurred um, at race seven. Um, okay, so it was it was a report uh, at round seven. Uh, so I'll just quickly go through this. Uh, so the comment was, I would like to report myself, this was SGP, I would like to report myself for accusations I made regarding SRIs moving under braking shortly after 16 minutes and 40 seconds of the footage. I understand it could be off-putting to receive such comments during the race, hence why SRI rage quit. I genuinely did feel he moved under braking at the time. Looking back, maybe it was just strong defence of his position and I apologised to SRI after the race. If I was at fault, I would understand a penalty given. Uh, the steward's view was SGP makes a move up the inside of SRI who goes for the apex and there is minor contact. SRI then makes a sub subsequent... Yeah, you can tell I didn't write this one, can't you? I would never have written subsequent. Um, I can't say it, let alone spell it. Uh, so SRI then makes a subsequent mis mistake and quits. I can't even stay mis say mistake and quits. Steve F1, use smaller words, please. Um, steward's verdict no penalty okay so let's have a look at this one shall we so three two one let's go so g10 race seven rage for me rage for me rage for me oh, oh, oh. um oh i could have written it there oh and i could have spoke about it at that point apologies folks give me a second uh, i didn't realize i'd put that gap in there right um otherwise i'd have done the intro bit and then got to the footage right give me a second i'll edit this bit or not okay so get back get back we'll be ready soon folks don't you worry just think of a joke to yourself 
Okay, so footage in three, two, one, let's go. So SRI ahead of SGP. Uh, they've come through the descension curve, heading up the hill, um, and we're going to see SGP uh, swoop to the inside. There he goes. SRI goes for the corner, a little bit of contact. SRI off the corner. That's where SGP was like, oh, I'm moving under braking. And then there was a bit of a converse conversation. And then SRI is going to uh, run wider. This is where we saw him disappear. Um, to offer it to the wall, he goes, returns to the track as safely as he can. Now, potentially annoyed and retires from the race. So we look at it from SRI's view here. Doesn't really look like there's much going on there. Um, so I can understand why, if SRI was using this view, why he didn't know what you're moaning at. Um, SGP having a look up the inside. SRI, though, at this point, may not realise he's in third gear, wondering why the car's not fucking turning, because he's in third gear in a second. Um, and that's a sign that he's been distracted. But this is where I'd look at this and go, okay, that looks like it may have been. And is it a bit of a late move? Did SRI move under braking? I'm not sure. So let's have a look. Does SRI move under braking or does he go for the corner? I think he's going for the corner. Right. Well, let's have a look from SGP here. So he moved to the inside. There is a little bit of contact. But I'm thinking now, it's like, okay, let's have a look. Okay, so he's moved to the inside. So is he within fair range for this corner? I'm not sure. Maybe it'd have to be a bit of a late. He's, at, he's quite far away. Okay, now there's contact. How much of the car is there? There's a little bit of an overlap. So this for me is, okay, this is looking a bit like a, a late move now. An SRI has just gone for the corner. So I'm looking at that and thinking, well... SGP has gone for a little bit of a late move. Is he in fair range? Maybe, maybe not. But in that situation, in that corner, if he's going to be going for a move at that point, he's got to be prepared for the fact that SRI could turn in for the corner. And that's what SRI does. I don't think SRI moves under braking, doesn't close the door. I think he's just going for um, the corner like he normally would. Um, and SGP has got a little bit of his car... Um, there now obviously there are big discussions ray about what is fair range what isn't fair range and there is no set distance that we can give even if people want one it can't happen um because there's too many different factors that have an effect on what that fair range could be um but fair range also doesn't mean if you're within fair range you can go for the overtake no matter what it just means that you're within a distance where the car ahead can't go ape shit if he turns in and you're there and it also means that if you're within fair range if you go for the overtake you can't go ape shit if the other guy does turn in on you yeah Are you falling asleep? No, no. Oh, you're just not talking, not listening to me, not, not responding to me. I'm just not making any comment on this. Oh, all right, all right, okay. So you can say less than yes, nodding. Um, but yeah, I mean, for me, I mean, we don't have a how much alongside is alongside. It's you have to give room, but the, the guy has to be there fairly. And personally and also steve f1 that was looking at that one with me um yeah we both felt that sri's not done anything wrong sgp's not really done anything wrong but it is it's a it is a bit of a it's more of a late attempt at overtake than it is a moving under braking um but yeah sgp may disagree but tough right should we go on to the last one then ray okay so there's no need to pause this one. So, uh, three, two, one, let's go. GX Race 9. In Swedish, does box mean war? Hmm, I don't know. But we've got Jason behind Rich. Oh, he's going for the pit lane. No, he's not. He's going for the wall. Well done, Jason. Now he's on the pit straight. Uh-oh. We're in trouble. Oh, 
This is the next lap. He's nowhere near the wall this time, is he? <laughs> now, I don't know if you know that that happened, Ray. No. No. Uh, so... Have another look and have a look at what lap it's on. When he hits the wall. <laughs> lap two? Yeah, lap two. He's gone for the pits as Jason and completely <laughs> got it wrong. I think that's probably got it wrong better than anybody else because he wasn't touched, he wasn't hit. He just went to drive in the pits and ended up in the pit wall. Yep. You missed that one up, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Um, maybe he felt left out after you being put in the pits so much last week. Um, <laughs> now, obviously, that is for this week's race. Um, but, yeah. Um, uh, that covers the G-spot, I think, right? Yep. Oh, I think we've done well getting it all done. Hour and 20 minutes. I thought it would take a lot longer. All right. Mm. Okay, anything else you want to mention? No. No. <laughs> Can we go and do the race? <laughs> yeah, we'll go and do the commentary now. Um, <laughs> the, the only thing, I, well, actually, one thing I will mention is I'm not intending on doing any G-spot stuff over the next few weeks because the next championship we're going into is a dirty championship um so guys if you don't know what the rules are of that make sure you are aware of those rules um but yeah so probably won't be doing any g spots uh, but if people remember any water moves or anything like that um then maybe we could do something like that but i think we might just uh, give ray and myself a bit of a break for a few weeks right ray thank you for joining me uh, on tickling the g spot yeah. What is? Yeah. Um, yeah. And thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, hope everybody has been able to uh, keep up with us there, and uh, can understand uh, why decisions may or may not have been made. All right. Have a good one, everybody. Like, subscribe. You know what to do, and check out the race footage. Have a good one. See you later.